Hey guys, technology is my favorite thing. Let me see if I can fix this a little bit. Make sure I know where I'm supposed to be looking. The joys of video, I'm telling you what, like you're going to see everybody's, like every little bitty um, flaw. It's such a beautiful thing, isn't it? Um, so anyway, so welcome in. Uh, tonight we are here for 30 books in 30 weeks. I took a couple days off this week to for one one day for reflection one day for celebration and then it was right back to the rhinestone so uh 30 books in 30 weeks if you um join in on the video um welcome if you catch it on the replay thank you for making that investment in me and in yourself to um, maybe pick up an aha or a couple new nuggets of personal development 30 books in 30 weeks is all about um that personal development journey and I'm writing my personal development library to bring you all various nuggets that have helped me um, over the years to um, be very successful in um, both recovery, healing, and also entrepreneurship, so building my business. And so this is all always about love, life, relationships, and business. Um, everything always goes together. You can't you're going to struggle to separate um, the person from the business and vice versa. So um, for those of you who maybe you're just joining for the first time, you don't know who I am. My name is Marcy Batiste. I am a public speaker. I'm an author and I am America's number one success and recovery trainer. And um, if you follow me, you know I'm sold out to my happiness. Uh, that's my guiding light. I live life on Mars, working, kind of living in my own little world, operating by my own little rules. And the thing that um, I really truly treasure is to be able to be in a position to help other women shine and help them discover and embrace their star power so that they can actually uh, reconnect some of the disconnects that life has um, thrown at them based on their past experiences and that sort of thing. Um, reconnecting those disconnects is so important. Those are the things that keep us attached to our fears, flaws, and failures from the past, and then they help, they keep us from moving forward. They leave us feeling, you know, emotionally bankrupt and um, spiritually unaligned and um, in many cases physically exhausted and in some cases, a lot of cases, physically obligated. And when I talk about that physical obligation, it's what, um, for lack of a better term, that's the one I've, I've decided to use. Hey, Shereen. Um, but that physical obligation is when, as women, we don a mask and pretend like everything's okay um, while we are busy sc scurrying around trying to make everything all right for everybody else because we're afraid if we show that we're really not okay that the whole world's going to crumble. If I don't do it, it won't get done type of thing. And so we apply these star power pillars and build this foundation that allows us to cure that emotional bankruptcy, realign ourselves um, spiritually and um, really truly give our give our minds a break sometimes sometimes that's what you need you just need to take take a hoosa moment so that's who i am that's a little bit about who i am what's going on jay and tonight so 30 books in 30 weeks we are talking about um our book this week in week 16 is one of my books it's called healing by design and it is actually a companion thought guide for my book love miscarriage and the thought guide actually healing by design takes you through the healing and recovery process after um, a devastating breakup and that's what happens to my lead character in the book um, man she falls in love with has a whirlwind romance she thinks he's it he's the one cream of the crop everything I've ever hoped for and then he says I'll be right back babe walks out of her life without an explanation and she's got to pick up the broken pieces from that love miscarriage and so the companion thought guide, actually what I've discovered over the years in helping uh, clients deal with some pretty big emotional issues is that sometimes it's easier to talk about somebody else than it is to talk about yourself. And so this is kind of a soft approach to that healing journey to say, okay, let me put myself in this position. And so tonight we're talking about um, that savage life and how heartbreak can really harden your heart it can make you really really bitter it can make you um hey terry it can make you want to play that oh if you if, that, if that's if that's what you want to do 
you know, it'll give you that kind of an attitude. You got the neck roll, the whole nine yards going on. Um, and you and you start to pretend like nothing phases you. Like, oh yeah, you, you think you can you can think you can do that with me and get away with it, or you think you can do that to me and get away with it. Um, and so you kind of come up with this really abrasive personality as a result of the pain. And you have to recognize that that attitude and that personality, that that savage behavior per se, is indicative of how deeply you're hurt. And so typically the more bad behavior you exhibit in situations like that, um, the more aggressive you get in situations like that, um, it's really indicative of how much more deeply you're hurt. And hurt people hurt people. And so um, I bring this up because I had done a post um, this morning that was talking about um, how it's important to know um, where you've been, but it's more important to not stay, to understand that you don't have to stay there. And one of the comments that I got back um, was from a young lady and she said something to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing, she said something to the effect of, yeah, it's hard to be a hard ass or a bad ass or something like that. And what I shared with her and what I want to share with you all is that you can't let bad situations harden your heart. Um, and then I, I, I even changed my um, I even changed my background and it says something like again I'm paraphrasing but it says something like um, pretending you're a savage won't heal the hole in your heart. And that's so true because we think that we can um, put on this the suit of armor and suddenly we're invincible suddenly you can't hurt us anymore well guess what I have a news flash for you you're already hurt and this just makes you a bigger part of your own problem than it does to create a solution and so what I was sharing with the young lady was that um, no matter what happened to me even with the domestic violence um, and even in a lot of the other really bad um, relationship experiences, the toxic people, the narcissist, um, trust me, I've run the gamut of jacked up relationships. And um, But what I, I've always been very, very consciously aware was that I cannot let that change my heart. Like my heart, my vulnerability, my softer side, my sensitivity is something I'm very proud of. Um, I don't want that to change. My giving spirit, I don't want that to change. I don't want that to go away. But I shared with her that you have to learn to be more selective about who you give that to. And so it used to be that I was so I was so out there with it. Like I just trusted people until you gave me a reason not to. I let everybody yesterday I was talking about that inner that inner circle and the outer rim. Um, I was so eager to just bring people into my inner circle. And then they would take advantage of it. And then I'm left feeling jacked up, pissed off, um, frustrated, feeling like I'm taking advantage of, um, underappreciated, like every negative word you can think of because I feel stupid is what it amounted to. Like I feel dumb, like I shouldn't have trusted this person. And I had to realize, I had to really take a step back. This was a huge part of my, my healing. It was a big aha for me. And I had to take a step back and I said, you know what? It's not a bad thing to love. It's not a bad thing to be caring. It's not a bad thing to be sensitive. It's not a bad thing to be vulnerable. It's a bad thing to be those things to a bad person, a negative person, a toxic person. And so how do you how do you balance that? How do you how do you build in the harmony that allows you to protect your heart? Because I'm not saying you have to always hang your heart out there on the chopping blocks. How do you protect your heart, but still allow your heart to shine through? And I have a, a saying, it's my personal mission statement. And this was the thing, uh, matter of fact, it's hanging up in my office um, on the wall. But that saying is that I, this is my mission statement, I will love with my head, I'll lead with my heart, and leave a legacy that my daughters can be proud to say that's my mama and this is what she stood for and those elements are so important to me because that was my teachable moment that was that aha for me that said you know what 
I don't want to change my loving spirit and my giving heart. I just need to lead differently. So I'm going to lead with my heart, but I'm going to love with my head. Meaning I'm going to think things through. I'm not just going to be willy-nilly out there throwing my heart around. I'm not out there throwing it on a chopping block, putting it on a discount market. I'm very, very protective of that. Just like I'm protective of my happiness. And guess what? When you protect your heart, all of a sudden your happiness is a whole lot a whole lot easier to 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 defend because you're not constantly compromising it. But that savage life will always backfire on you. The other thing um, and why it will always backfire is because you attract what you are, not what you desire. Let me say that again. You attract what you are, not what you desire. So if you say the biggest thing in the world I want is um, this kind of love and this kind of relationship and I want somebody who's caring and understanding the good communicator and da, 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 you got your laundry list. This is this is what Prince Charming looks like. But then you out there acting like a fool. You acting like beast instead of the beauty. Guess what you're going to attract? You're going to attract what you are, not what you desire. So it's one of those hello gorgeous type of things where you got to quick check yourself and say you know what I'm behaving so badly and this is what I'm going to attract I'm going to attract people who behave badly based on my behavior because the universe is going to send me something in kind it's not going to send me what I want because what I'm that what I'm demonstrating is that I'm not ready for that kind of love I'm not ready for that level of relationship I'm not ready for that level of interaction and so you teach people how to treat you so that's the other thing. That's the third. That's the third piece. If you teach people how to be in relation with you, and you teach them from a negative, toxic aspect, guess what? They're gonna be in relation with you in a toxic manner. So if you if you cussing, huffling, puffing, and fussing, guess what you're gonna get? Somebody wants to tussle, hust, huff, and puff with you. You will always attract what you are, not what you desire. And so it doesn't matter how many times you put it out there. I said I shared with on, on my domestic violence video the other day that affirmation without identification is worthless. That's what that's like. When you decide, oh, I'm a I'ma put on my, my shield of armor and I'ma act I'ma act all tough and I'ma act all hard, like don't nothing bother me and let me play you because you played me kind of thing. That's what you're gonna get back. It doesn't matter how much you voice, communicate affirm that you want something different from the universe you will always get what you get what you're giving out you will always attract what you are not what you desire so think about that think about um how you operate and how you show up to the world because how you show up is to the world to the world is what the world's going to show you and um again living proof of that i had a negative mindset i had a toxic shitty attitude and i had to learn that a big part of my epic fails at relationships, both personal and um, intimate relationships, was because I had a negative mindset. I had some toxic behaviors. I did the whole, well, let me play you before you play me. Uh, you going to get played before I do. I had all of that going on. And guess what? I constantly was surrounded by people who were full of BS. Constantly both personal platonic and intimate partners like it was always it was all bad so it wasn't until i changed me and learned to stand authentically in my love and with my heart and all my sensitivities and all my vulnerabilities and it truly be able to be the genuine person that i desired to be before I started attracting those kinds of friendships, those kinds of intimate relationships. I hope that makes sense. But acting like a savage will never heal you. And, and, and until you can admit that you're hurt, that you're broken. Hey, Josiah, how you can, until you can admit those things, you'll continue to be hurt. And you'll, rem you'll, you'll remain on, on the hamster wheel of constantly bringing that back into your life. Bringing that back into your life. You don't have to be the badass you just have to heal you have to get healthy again you have to fix your mindset you have to cure the emotional bankruptcy you have to realign yourself spiritually 
that's what discovering embracing your star power does that's that's i mean when i tell you like that's the biggest thing that i work with my clients on is your habits and your mindset your habits and your mindset your habits and your mindset what are you showing up as how do you want to show up to the world because if you're showing up as a savage you're definitely going to get beast not the beauty so that's my story i'm sticking to it as always i appreciate y'all for joining in i appreciate you for for chiming in on the replay and as always thanks for living life on mars guys we'll talk to y'all tomorrow